Listeners be advised, the Holiloquy podcast discuss matters related to the human experience and many that are sexual in nature. Due to this, some conversations may surround triggering topics such as sexual violence, self-harm, abuse, and much more. Please be advised, a list of crisis and psychological resources will be available in the show notes of this episode. With that said, let's get started with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please as we go through the following safety instructions. In the event that there is a loss of cabin pressure, oxygen mask will drop from the overhead. Place the mask over your nose and mouth. Breathe normally as oxygen is flowing even if the mask is not in place. Make sure to adjust your own mask before helping others. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the Holy Liquid Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. This is your favorite host, Vernon T. Scott, also known as Slater Jackson. For you freaky motherfuckers out there, Sebastian Adams. On today's episode, we're getting choosy. We like deciding what the fuck we like. We're talking about preferences, and I'm blessed to have this motherfucker Z with me. How the fuck are you doing today? I'm doing fucking well. How about yourself? I get jealous every time I hear you talk because of this voice. I'm just like, look, I need to <laughs> my, my voice. Nah. That, that little um, body, you know. Got nah. Sweat. <laughs> nah, you, you was born with it. <laughs> you know, I should be a little jealous. Child, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I, had to, I had to work for it. I had to pay for it. Yeah, you, you, had, to, you had to put in some bucks. <laughs> exactly in years exactly, and <laughs> exactly. there time consuming as yes. i am it's a lot of shit yes oh my God. <laughs> so much <laughs> so yes enjoy it you're right you're right look humbling the motherfucker okay i take it i accept it all so well this is your first time on the holy Liquid podcast and we're happy to have you with us but before we get started it's good for the uh, audience to know exactly who you are, what you do, all your great things. So, Z, who the fuck are you? Well, I'm Z Ray. You know what I'm saying? Also known as I hear. Um, I'm the host of No I'm Talking About Podcast. It's a new episode of uh, a new podcast that I got going. Uh, be uh, free to check that out or whatever. I'm on all the streaming platforms pretty much. And shit, I don't be on nothing. I'm from Houston. A trans guy, uh, yeah, <laughs> nothing too special, nothing, <laughs> nothing too crazy, you know. Man, I was actually listening to your newest episode the other day, and so this episode that we're recording now is going to be like coming out in May ish. So right. every, I, I think my audience know by this point that everything it's like a time it's a time fuck because it's like oh yeah I did this yesterday and then they hear this and it's like june july and they're just like so did he really do this yesterday or like what the fuck is going on here no it was like months ago motherfuckers this <laughs> it is what it is but got um, you. it was uh I, I forgot her name um but it was just a, it was a great conversation um between just two trans identifying individuals about you know the differences it's like i love when y'all were talking about differences and privileges right, and I, right. I was like this is the type of argument that me- people need to like hear uh and it right. wasn't like one of those jabbing at you like you could do this you could do that but it was just, just mm-hmm. an actual conversation like well i see on on my end i see that the privilege mm-hmm. lies here and mm-hmm. i loved her point when uh she was like because you're a trans man you uh, innately get uh, male privilege too and i was like right. mm, she kind of got a point and I was like, if we're passable. <laughs> You're right. You did you did say that. And that's that's also a good, because, a good point. Because that's real. Cause you know, you know, the experience I have of not being passable at one point is completely different versus me being passable now. So I wanted to point that out because and not that I was trying to be shady or say, you know, you know, trying to shit on non-possible trans men, it was just me speaking on from experience. Like, 
I remember walking through the mall with a girl. I was early in transition, maybe like a year or two in, because I didn't start to get changes till like, shit, like two and a half years. And so I was walking through a mall with a girl, and then this lady covered up her daughter's eyes when we were walking past. Yeah, I know. And I don't know, that was just uh, something I never experienced before. But I'm sure I kind of look like in between at that time. So because <laughs> like even before when I lived like a stud, that's never occurred. You know, people might have bothered with me a little bit, but I, I just I had to point that out. Like it would be passable because I didn't deal with a lot of microaggressive shit too. like, you know, especially in that in between stage. Mm -hmm. Trans people know what I'm talking about like that in between androgynous looking stage and you want to be passable. This shit is uncomfortable as hell. <laughs> uh, no, when y'all were talking about androgynous people, I felt that conversation so well because, yeah, I, honestly, <laughs> I'm just like, <clears throat> I've had my own t uh, moments when I'm just like, I really don't know exactly how I should address you. I want to ask <laughs> what's your pronouns, but at the same time, I don't know how offended you will be by me right. asking this question. <laughs> so I'm just, what is your fucking name? Can, like, let's start there. Right. Yeah, go from there because some people, they they binary and they want to be passable. If you ask them their pronouns, they might be like, damn. <laughs> like, I, thought, I thought, like, my dysphoria is triggered. Like, I thought I was getting through. Like, so you never really know. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? But, like, some people want it to be a world where everybody just asks each other pronouns off the gate. You know what I mean? And I don't know. For me, I... I don't want you to ask me with my pronouns because I'm a question myself. Like, <laughs> do I look like, what do I do? I look, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. That's something that I feel like I have to be comfortable in my manhood and how I look <laughs> to be comfortable with people randomly asking me that. I don't know. No, Not to I say I'm against it, but <clears throat> like, you know I what I'm saying? I get it. Like, I think about, like, political correctness a lot, and I feel like that's the only reason to continue to ask people their pronouns, and I'm just like, right. you don't really think about asking that question until you feel as though you're in the presence of someone who may or may uh, may not mm -hmm. be trans, mm -hmm. meaning someone who may be non-binary mm -hmm. or someone who's trans, and that's the only time mm -hmm. you really think about it, and I'm just like... I would rather for someone just to correct me straight up and just like, oh, my pronouns are actually they, them. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting right. me know. Now I can use that going forward. Just correct the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like, I know it can get tiring. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just trying to exist and just <laughs> be great. Yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to come up to every stranger and ask them, hey, what's your pronouns? Before I have to have a conversation. Uh, like... <laughs> Like in the job interview. It's not like, realistic to me. It's not. I remember this <laughs> LinkedIn commercial where there was this trans woman, um, you know, uh, applying for a job and they uh, sit down. Well, she sits down uh, because she mentioned in the um, in the promo oh my um, pronouns are she her. Um, and I'm like, OK, that's great. But who's really going into these workspaces and the first day you are your ass is okay what are your pronouns like who, who <laughs> is that going to happen at my next job interview should i go ahead and just <laughs> put it on your 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 resume exactly <laughs> I guess that's going to be what we do going forward. Like, you see my <laughs> name on there, and then it says Vernon. And if I've come up in there looking completely different than what you expected, and, and is that if that's your first question, I'm just like, okay, you got a problem with how I look? Call me Vernon. <laughs> right, right, right. Or just like, how would you like to be addressed? You know, like, you know, but still, like, I don't know. But that's, I mean, I feel like that's still, that could be respectful. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure the person will be like, wow, OK, they actually took me into consideration enough to ask me how can I address you and respect you, basically. So, Agreed. yeah, but just willy nilly. Hey, what's your pronouns? Oh, OK, you know, my name is such and such. So, like, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a little, little interesting, but yeah.
Like, people should not ask me that question. Someone actually did ask me, and I was completely honest because I have, I, I do, I, I, I identify as several pronouns, and I tell them, he, yeah. him, he, him, ho, that's my pronouns. So, <laughs> if you, you got a problem with that? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> that's the first. I never heard of how before. That, that's a uh, good one. <laughs> we're, we are a growing community. <laughs> <laughs> got you. There's actually a um, shit. What was that podcast called? It's a podcast. It's some girls from New York, and I think one non-binary person. Um, I think it's the hub. Something whole podcast, and they basically educate like on sex, um, you know, different stuff like SCDs, anatomies, mm-hmm. you know, different shit. Damn, I forgot, but I'll let you know if I find out. But it's a pretty good one. It's pretty cool. I think they I cool know which people. one you're talking about. Did they win? Um, black uh, inner um, whole black... uprising. Them, yes, 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 yes. yes. They, they, know. they, cool people. Yeah, they they won um, the Black Podcast uh, Award last uh, last year for um, uh, Sets Podcast. That's how yeah. I found them. They they are yeah, good. Yeah. that's a good show, and they they are uh, no longer they've ended their uh, series. And oh, really? Mm-hmm, after I think ten years. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they they got history. Yeah. So if y'all have not heard of them and this is your first time, along with following both of our podcasts, follow their podcast too. <laughs> it's all about sex education. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> the more, the merrier. Exactly. So to get into this topic of discussion, so uh, what exactly are your sexual preferences? Um, I would say I'm on the bisexual spectrum. Now I say spectrum. Because I don't think I'm fully bisexual where it's like equal. You see what I'm saying? Like I can be, um, I can easily fall in love since I was younger with women. Now with men, I've never been in love with a man, even though I've been in a relationship before a transition with some boys, you know what I'm saying? But as far as my sexuality, I would say, like, I'm sexually attracted to men, but even before sexually engaging with them, I was attracted. But um, with women, it's more of a, a, a amorous type of feel, like, mm-hmm. that includes <clears throat> trans women and cis women as well. I so I don't know. I, I've even I've even talked to a trans guy before, but it kind of just never really went anywhere. I don't know. <laughs> it just, I don't know. With men, it's just something, it's just harder to connect for whatever reason. It's not that there's really a, I don't think there's like a necessarily mental block. It's just something that's kind of like natural. The Holiloquy podcast focuses on the variability of sexual expression. When it comes to sexual expression, we often depend on pornography to illustrate how one must perform sexually. For those who have not learned this by now, the stuff you see in porn is not real. Pornography provides a singular perspective of sexual expression that is not often the reality we see during our own sexual encounters. The Holiloquy Podcast is a conversation that takes you outside of the compressed box of what many know about sex. Some of the topics we discuss include kinks, condom usage, status disclosure, and past sexual experiences. The Holiloquy Podcast steps out on sexual norms and recognizes that the norm is not the only normal. Subscribe today and join the conversation. It's just harder to connect for whatever reason. It's not that there's really a, I don't think there's like a necessarily mental block. It's just something that's kind of like natural. So yeah, I would say bisexual spectrum. Yeah. I get that. I'm glad that you said spectrum because a lot of people don't think of um, bisexuality as being somewhere on a spectrum because right. they think, oh, you're equally attracted to. It. No, that's not how it works. It's it's never yeah. how it works. Like even for myself, um, yeah. like I do connect a lot more with uh, masculine presenting people than I actually do with feminine presenting people. Uh, yeah. I don't know why it is what it is, but at the same time, I right. know what I like. And it's just like, right. yeah, I I can explore and experience these things with all these different people and enjoy it. And I want mm-hmm. to do that, but I do have 
uh, a preference between those two does right. that make me gay leaning not necessarily because look i don't like too many gay right. men like that like not to say <laughs> i cannot date gay men but right. look <laughs> like it's 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 a toss up. It is a toss up out there. <clears throat> like yeah. I I will I love the hell out of someone who identifies as queer. Oh my god, yes. Yeah. But like if it's just strictly, oh yeah, I'm gay. Okay, we <laughs> could work on some things and let's figure out how these things connect. But men are right. annoying. I, I'm saying this as a man. <laughs> men are fucking annoying. I agree. I annoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, I don't I get it. it. Like, yeah, I, and this is—it seems I can imagine as a gay man and not having just not even just that somebody that's only attracted to one. Like, I kind of feel sorry because it's like, what if you get tired of mm. <laughs> one specific gender or sexuality? You can't, you know, what I mean, you can't fluctuate, but. <laughs> I don't know because like men are I don't know like I feel sorry sometimes for people that just like men like there's women included like because mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's so much like things that society puts like so much conditioning that mm -hmm. men always have to unravel see what I'm saying and it's like mm -hmm. the patience of having to work through that I'm sure is very laboring <laughs> uh, I, I think I think the thing that really I don't want to say bother, but the the disconnect that I have with like dating a lot more a lot of gay men is because it's so fixated on trying to play out the heterosexual life. And like whenever I think really? of um like just heterosexual couples in general, they when I see how they interact with each other, I'm just like, why are y'all being so restricting in how y'all express your sexuality? Yeah. Like, you could do so right. many fucking things. So many right. things. And Even then, when they have conversations, it's typically very conservative. Like, they rarely mm -hmm. are open about talking about things, mm -hmm. especially regarding, like, sexuality and, you know what I'm saying? Like, they kind of just be over the, what's it called? Just surface level. Mm -hmm. That's it. And yeah. that's what I get whenever I engage with a lot of gay men too, unfortunately. It's like they don't see the um well the ones that I've experienced didn't see, oh, maybe I can do anything beyond that. Maybe I can mm -hmm. explore a lot more than just fucking each other. I can explore the sensual mm -hmm. side of sex. I can explore the passion that we can have together. But it's always mm -hmm. the oh, let's fuck 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 and i want you to be like the woman in this situation i'm just like but i'm a whole ass nigga here <laughs> or um <laughs> the, do you i've gotten so many more people um uh, contact me mostly i guess it's because i've started wearing a lot more lacy clothing but they're just like hey you wear panties and i'm like no i wear boxers the fuck why, why are we here <laughs> what brought what brought us here <laughs> <laughs> that fetish shit but i don't know it seemed like I guess that's kind of where some insecurity goes mm -hmm. with the thought of dating a gay guy because I wouldn't want to be treated like the woman, if that makes sense. And I think some of them off the top kind of assume that if you're into dating gay men as a trans guy, you're okay. Like I even had some guy tell me that he wanted to date a trans guy because he felt like trans men have that womanly instinct and <laughs> will will help feed him in some way like his, i guess his ego or something i don't know it's weird but they be having all types of shit to say but i don't i'm not like a lot of trans men where they start to get bitter towards trans uh, towards gay men and i see how it could because i've never dealt with more men telling me they want to get me pregnant than gay men like <laughs> randomly so i don't know like it, it be getting kind of disrespectful but i think it comes with the territory with um you know doing like only fans and shit like that and showing off my body and, and embracing my body you know what i'm saying so i charge it to the game but for some guys it make them very bitter i've seen See, I need, I need wh whoever these gay men are to get, um, like, become <laughs> friends with, the, uh, like, lesbian women. Because the reason why, they will learn that 
Just because you have a, a vagina, a cervix, a, a right. um, uterus. uterus, doesn't mm-hmm. mean that this motherfucker is going to give birth to nobody. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> with having right, like that's what I learned with just having lesbian friends because I know plenty who's just like, oh no, no, a baby come out of this body? The fuck you mean? <laughs> no, my bitch right. is going to be the one that's giving birth. Okay, right. Okay. It, and it's even it's even some straight women, um, or guys that I mean, some girls that just mostly date men that don't want to have kids. Like I've I met a few. They like nah, like. The stuff that come with that, like, I don't know. Like, it's even uh, my sister, she talked about how her blood type didn't mix well with her husband because when they had a baby, it was the most excruciating experience versus with my other niece. You see what I'm saying? Like, people have their reasons why they don't even fuck with having kids. But, you know, people don't think about stuff like that when they lust get the best of them. Or, you know, I also understand some gay men rather have a kid with somebody that looks like a guy you know what i'm saying they can engage with a guy sexually somebody that physically looks like a guy but you know and because like i get it like i see through all of it and i i know that some of it can be genuine but like i think there's also like a weird fetish with it too <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah they- and I, I think we could talk about both you know what i'm yeah. saying <laughs> I, I need them to like give them some more friends because I'm, <laughs> I'm fortunate enough to have uh, uh, two friends who are willing to be a surrogate for me and this is regardless of right. if I end up with someone who has a penis or someone who has a vagina they were like look if so right. if it's open and that's right. something you're willing oh let's go ahead and get that right. done and it's like we just have that connection and we just have that yeah. friendship my well, mind you, one of them, she's just like, I just want to have a baby. And I'm on her list of if she doesn't have a baby by this certain point, burn it. Right. Give me that right. jizz. You you the, you the baby's father. <laughs> <laughs> so like, right. And, and it's it some, is. Yeah, it's some lesbians. It's some straight women. Like, it's so many different people. Like, if you want to have a kid, like, it's so many ways. The technology is upgraded now. You don't even have to have sex with them. Mm. Like, but you come to me, okay, maybe this is a fetish. You see what I'm saying? That's where my mind goes. <laughs> so, I have to be real honest, Loki. I kind of want to be a baby. I kind of want to be a deadbeat baby daddy. <laughs> Just for like a year or two. <laughs> I don't know why. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why. I just... That's yeah, just a daddy. goal. I, the urge. <laughs> the urge. Like, the sometimes urge I just want to be a fuck nigga. Like, I've been such <laughs> a great person to other people for so much of my life. I could do, yeah. like, a couple years of fuck nigga tree and be okay with it. <laughs> See, I don't know about <laughs> the, the, the baby daddy part. Maybe in other aspects. <laughs> but the, if you have a kid, you better be there. Look, I will. Kid. I will. <laughs> All the time. I just need, like, it, it could be like the ultimate role play. Like, let me just, like, you know, I'm taking care of the kid and everything uh. and being supportive. I just need, okay, set it up, set up the scene. I'm going to be staying at a hotel for like two years. I'm I'm going to visit you, of course, pay and all this other stuff. But I need those calls about where the fuck are you at? Like, come get your kid. I need- <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, see, you trying to be like some movie shit. I see. <laughs> got you. Got you. I get it. Oh god. <laughs> Uh, this this I, I I fear for my future kids because they are just gonna be like, why is our dad so fucking extra? I'm tired of this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as they having fun, True. they ain't gonna care. They True. having fun, and you extra, they love it. Exactly. <laughs> So one of the things we were talking about in uh, the intake meeting, uh, most definitely when it came to like um, your preferences, people that you find interesting is the importance of their personality and how Mm -hmm. well you connect with them. So what what does personality mean to you and how does that relate to choosing someone to be with? Well, kind of like we discussed, like the biggest thing for me is how they treat others like especially others that they're not attracted to others that um others 
that don't benefit them in any way? You know what I'm saying? Like, how are you with people that you don't like? Like, how are you with people that in general, like just walking through life? Like, that's something I pay attention to. Like, it's always been a turn off if I was dealing with a girl and she was just rude and nasty to people for no reason and just you know what I'm saying like it would be cool with me you know it would be no issue but I'm saying like I, I I see the dark side you see what I'm saying like that's that's something you can always pay attention to to see any red flags but personality mean a lot to me like um like I don't know I also dealt with dull people mm. it's real dry you know what I'm saying real dry don't like that so you know, I don't know. I'm already kind of a boring person, so you can't be just as boring. <laughs> like, like you got to oh, be a little more entertaining. I don't know. <laughs> no, I get that. Yeah, I, I truly get that. Like, I know, like for me, I I do like so. I like someone who is down to earth, but right. I can't. There's a certain threshold of excitement that I just cannot handle. Like I have, I have <laughs> friends uh, on both spectrum. Like they're right. extremely um, exciting and um, you know the extra extroverted. Yeah. And then I have the ones who are very nonchalant and just you know about themselves and introvert mm -hmm. to the max. And I'm just like I can only spend time with you. But I cannot yeah. spend a long period of time with you because if I have to come <laughs> home to an extrovert every fucking day, yeah. I'm annoyed. I need to leave <laughs> because they, they be the motherfuckers that be pranking on camera and shit and doing pranks and always in a mm -hmm. mood to fucking socialize and go do stuff and ugh, have people over. I can't stand that shit. I, I can't either. I, I need I a break. If I end up on camera, people are going to end up thinking I'm verbally abusive. And I'm just like, that's not what's going on. It's just I'm tired of this motherfucker shit. I've been right. praying 18 fucking times this week. And it's only Tuesday. Uh, then be the motherfuckers. I don't need it. I don't need it. I just, mm -mm. I, I like a sense of quietness when I come home. It doesn't have to always be quiet. Just the first five minutes. It's just to recognize I'm home. I'm home. Right. Things are great. And if I can't get that five minutes, if you turn into a motherfucking puppy, oh my God, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel you. See, I, I, I need the, the, the ambivert energy. Yeah. Not super introvert like me, which is cool. I dated a girl that was super introverted just like me, but I don't know. I need, I, I'm already too to myself. I need that, that balance. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it can't be too introverted too extroverted you know what i'm saying like and i because i because if you ambiverted you'll understand my introvert ways versus the extrovert i've been around them and then they'll get offended if you don't talk like i remember being around somebody and they was like why people here they don't want to talk they don't want to do nothing i was like Ooh, see I I love me a passive aggressive motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, uh, okay. I moved around. I ain't tripping. Mm, I like to be petty. Don't let it be their house too. Mm, why is there? <laughs> why is there stains all over this fucking carpet? Oh my god! Mm. Uh, <laughs> they gonna tell that? you to get out. <laughs> uh, I've seen some people come out the bathroom and be like, hey, you're um uh, like they'll point out something. They'll be like, hey, you're uh you know, just point out anything. Like if they you could tell they don't like the person, mm -hmm. they'll just find something to pick at if they in their house <laughs> and do it in the most slick way. I've seen that. Look, if, <laughs> if you have issues with finding out who the fuck is your friends, invite them yep. over and see who has a problem with every fucking thing. Uh -huh. That's the person you don't ever want to hang out with. Now, <laughs> if your house is a mess, that might be the best person. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Like, girl, why you don't invite people here? over if your house is a mess? No. <laughs> from from the from the get go, the start oh, there. God. No, no, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck raised y'all um <laughs> <laughs> so well since we're talking about um you know people <laughs> over and shit um 
pH balances and body odor. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. That's a transition, right? Um, <laughs> so I know, like, for me, I'm okay with uh, a partner who may have, you know, because we all have our own little body odors and whatnot. Um, right. My only thing is if uh, if you're walking around smelling like onions 24-7, I have a problem. <laughs> well, you come straight from the gym, you know what I'm saying? Or from outside, you know, I understand, like, mm. as long as you know when your cue is to get in the shower, like, I feel like everybody should know when their cue is. Exactly. Like, <laughs> same with, like, maintenance, you know, of any sort, like, most people know when they time, like, they know when it's time to get a haircut, they know when it's mm. time, you need to know your cue when to get in the shower. Exactly. And, you know, some people don't know they cute, unfortunately. No, Loki, <laughs> I, I feel like I cannot fuck with any person who can get a haircut on a weekly basis but can't shower daily. <laughs> I don't get right, it. Right, exactly. Well, Something's even, off there. Even if it's not daily, every other day, I'm okay with it. But, like, if I'm smelling <laughs> you on a regular fucking basis, yet you clean it, <laughs> cleaner than the motherfucker, we have a motherfucking problem. <laughs> Or somebody that just got the shower and they still not all the way fresh. Smell. It's like what's what's going on? So what's, they only use happening? water. I... <laughs> what's happening? Like I, I rinsed I, off I, all the dirt. Yeah, the, the suds not working <laughs> with the soap, or you need a more sudsy, you know, bath wash or. Well, do you what? need to talk? Are you okay? What's going on? <laughs> now, of course, if this is your kink, go ahead. I love it for you. I love it for you. Continue <laughs> to practice nah. your kink. It's not over here. I love. If that's it. your kink, let me know so that I can cut you off and <laughs> you can move on. But <laughs> Look, not but everybody's yes. meant to be <laughs> together. <laughs> yes. Now, pH balance stuff. You know what I'm saying. There's many ways to treat that, you know what I'm saying? It's really about putting in the effort, you know what I'm saying? Luckily, I've never dealt with a girl like that. But, you know, like like when I got on testosterone, I had to relearn my body completely. Like I had to understand that maybe I need to take two baths a day now. Like whereas before I was like super hairless, you know what I'm saying? I rarely got stinky at all. And I just had to relearn my body, like, in general. Like, hair started growing down there. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's different smells now <laughs> that <laughs> happened. So I learned I had to keep up with that. And then I, I found myself on male grooming YouTube fucking uh pages and shit trying to learn how to groom properly and do all this different stuff and i was getting advice from people you know what i'm saying now as far as the ph balance stuff there's many different ways to get that in check like you could get a little what's it called this is one lady she made what they call pussy pops it's basically like little inserts you put in there to balance your ph balance like anything can throw it off like stress Mm. having sex with dirty people and having sex with the wrong people you know what i'm saying shit even people putting fingers or you know what i'm saying using the wrong soap not fucking using clean towels and you know it's all types of different shit like not eating right like mm-hmm. and luckily i'm not one of those people that's super sensitive Although testosterone does make you a little sensitive because you don't have that natural estrogen dominated balance or whatever now. So I am even more strict with stuff like because I know how sensitive it is now. So, yeah, that's that's some serious stuff. And who wants to be like that? You know what I'm saying? But I also learned that by not having sex often (laughs) is the best way to go with that type of stuff <laughs> you know, like, I, I really do think that uh, a lot of uh, men penis owning people masculine presenting people really do right. need to like l- look into these same um, right. grooming videos as well as learn about pH balance <laughs> because it's like there's some responsibility on your end too like you cannot just be eating pussy any kind of way and not have 
brush your teeth, make sure that you yep. floss, make sure that there's nothing yep. in there that can um, knock the mm-hmm. pussy off whack. Also, mm-hmm. making sure you wash your hands, make sure you have mm-hmm. pH wipes for your dick and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. There are so many sexual health things mm-hmm. that you have to take in consideration before you, you know, yeah. get dive up in there. And also, I had, a guy, I had a guy try to give me uh, like alcohol cleaning wipes <laughs> after we had a session. I was like, nigga, I can't use that. What the fuck is wrong with you? You're like, yeah. I was nice about it. I was like, oh no, I'm good. I can't use that. But alcohol throws off. Like anybody knows that's like using something like alcohol Clorox wipes to wipe your vagina. That's going to throw everything off. Like <laughs> that's cleaning products. There's nothing like I'm even fucking cautious about what baby wipes i use like no fragrance like it's so many things like i remember working in bath and body works and i was trying to get this lady to buy this soap or whatever and she was like is this full body i was like i mean it can be and then she was like well i can't use that 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 throws off everything down there i kind of was like oh too too much information but you know she was like and I kind of laughed at it. She's like, what you laughing at? I'm for real. I was like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, so, some people are very uh, sensitive. Like, you, you never know. Like, you really got to know. Like, I know that eating yogurt, you know what I'm saying? Like, Greek yogurt. And it's so many different things that I learned, too. And it's funny because I be going to look up these things sometimes just to get educated on it. And, like, it's nothing but women. And I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and make a video of how to. I made a YouTube video of uh, how to keep your your mangina clean, like tips for trans men. <laughs> and I had did like some awesome. tips thing because it's always a woman that is telling you, you know what I'm saying. So I thought it'd be interesting. A lot of trans guys shy away from that conversation, but I mean. You got what you got, like mm-hmm. is what it is, and you want to take care of it. That's how I look at it. Some people they don't want to take care of, like some trans people want don't want to take care of their body because it's something about that they hate it. You know what I'm saying? But you can like want to change something, but still take care of it. Like even if you want top surgery, you can still check to see if you got lumps or something like to prevent breast cancer. Like. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't neglect yourself at the same time. Mm. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Well, I appreciate you for being willing and to, like, walk into that space because I know, like, with a lot of things, uh, it does make people, you know, uncomfortable to want to put themselves out there. Most definitely if it's a feel dominated by a specific gender. But sometimes (laughs) you just have to open the fucking door Mm because you never know who needs that information in Honestly, yeah. I say it's a lot of people who be needing it. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I will even say with conversations about bisexuality, there's not enough space out there for that. There's just you mm-hmm. either have to be recognized as heterosexual or gay, gay. That's <laughs> and that's, that's it. it. It's like and they still be saying, "Oh, you like trans women? Yes, okay. Well, you're gay. I understand. And I appreciate you for coming out." <laughs> <laughs> like it's no gray area for some people like you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's, just, <laughs> it's like, no gray area it's just that's not how life works life has its blacks it has its whites it has its gray it has its full color like, you just have to recognize right. the gray before you can even see the color of it all right. and that's not that's not our problem that's your problem you need to learn <laughs> so you can exactly see life in color exactly so before we close it out and go into this never have i ever segment uh mm-hmm. i have one last thing to bring up because uh, you mentioned a little bit earlier and uh it was just about mental blocks in general mm-hmm. so what mm-hmm. are some of the mental blocks that you had to um overcome on your pursuit of finding love or even mm-hmm. just to find yourself too um block that's that's a <laughs> that's still a hard <laughs> that's still a hard question you knew it was coming <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm still. I would say. I don't even know. I don't remember what I said. But <laughs> I would say it is. <laughs> I would say my blocks is okay. I know one. And finding myself or finding love, really, just seeing that I'm worthy of 
something good in life. Like, mm. like, like I always gave myself the short end of the stick because it's like maybe you don't deserve it. Like, uh, hold on, my bad. Maybe you don't deserve it. Like, and I always found myself trying to prove that I was a good person. So I was always letting people kind of run over me at one point, like especially early in my transition, as far as like family and stuff. Like I wanted them to see that I was a good person where they could look past the trans stuff. Like, like for instance, it's always that thing in the back of my head because my family's super religious. Like, like prove that you're such a good person um so that god will make you go to hell or do do all these things right as far as like being passive and kind and and you know proving that you're just you're a nice and good person so that people will overlook that transness so you can be the exception and i say i say that's a mental block because i didn't strive for the best things for me like i would I realized that I was harming myself in the process by letting people just do whatever they wanted and handle me any type of way or listening to their uh, negative thoughts, you know what I'm saying, instead of going for what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? So I would say that's the biggest mental block, like even with dealing with one particular girl in the past, um, same thing, I kind of just let her do whatever like just play with me basically (laughs) in the name of I want her to see the best side of me or see that when she do leave me I was the best thing she ever had and you know what I'm saying like that bullshit those was the biggest mental blocks for me like going through my young life yeah I get that I get that I know um when I was younger, um, there was uh, moments when I used to think like, oh, you know, uh, one day you're going to regret not, you know, appreciating me and whatnot. And I'll have to show you, like, I'm going to over outdo this, outdo that thing, Mm -hmm. or be the best thing on the block. And next thing you know, you're going to be like, oh, look, there's Bernie Ray over there. You know, that little, I think it, I think of it like the ugly ducking scenario, Mm -hmm. like um, when it just glows up and everybody else now wants to pay attention to them. But it's like, right. I got to a point where I was like, you know, sometimes I just have to recognize who I am and my beauty and just appreciate that. And any person right. that cannot see it, just don't, I, I don't, they don't deserve to be here. And I still right. struggle with some of that these days. Like, right. you know, does this person truly like me for me or mm. do they just like the idea of me or just uh, sometimes stepping aside from, from my thoughts and just recognizing like, you know, there's a possibility of greatness coming your way. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility that this thing won't fail because it's not showing that it is right now. Like don't make something fail. Don't construct a narrative that becomes real because you're afraid, you're, you're afraid Mm -hmm. to accept the truth that is happening Mm -hmm. today. Yeah. It's kind of like that overcompensation of the lack of love you're getting so it's like you're trying to be the love that holds it together or something like or the goodness that holds together all the ugly shit but it's like just let that shit go like fuck Mm. that (laughs) let that shit go it's not for you it's not for you and the people that respect you gonna respect you through your good bad ugly days like even when you're having your moody days, like they still gonna be like, what's wrong? You know, okay, let me know if you need anything. You know what I'm saying? Like they not gonna just be expecting you to be, cause at a certain point they do expect you to be passive. And once you set a boundary again, it's an issue. And then you'll be mm-hmm. sitting around wondering like, what did I do wrong? What you did was you fed a monster, like <laughs> by being passive, like, you fed it's no telling like it's a lot of narcissistic people too so mm. you know what i'm saying you can't feed their ego too much like trying to prove you're a good person they don't give a fuck about that they're narcissistic exactly so. look i, I, I <laughs> <laughs> if any person who's approaching me hoping that i'm going to feed their ego i'm sorry that's not that's not who i am right no, i'm <laughs> definitely not that no more no <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> like, my lesson. If I care about you, 
look, you're going to know how I feel about you in, a, in every single way. But stroking mm -hmm. your ego just to stroke your ego, bitch. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> nah, don't happen. Hell it no. Nah. Don't happen. That's cute. It's That's a cute fun. idea. <laughs> Wait on you know, it. And it's the difference between being nice and being a kiss ass mm -hmm. under your own expense or others' expenses. Like, yeah, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I used to tell people all the time uh, there's a difference between being kind and nice, and I'm, I'm a kind person. I'm mean as hell. <laughs> like, people used, to tell, like people used to tell me all the time, Bernie, you are so mean. And I, my, my go-to line, I never said I was nice. And I, I, I've yet to say it. <laughs> I am 29. <laughs> I'm turning 30th in end of this month. Still have yet to say I'm nice. <laughs> hey. You know yourself. <laughs> you Deal know with yourself. it. <laughs> so, exactly. all right. Uh, I definitely will, I have a sex question to ask uh, if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm going to do a never have I ever first. Okay. Um, never have I ever made someone orgasm in under a minute. See, I forgot how to play this game. Well, <laughs> it's a yes or no. Oh, Never have I ever. So if I have, I will say no. No, if you have, you'll say yes. Oh yes, I have. Yeah. So <laughs> how the fuck was that experience? <laughs> well, I mean, I was giving a girl head and I know what I'm doing, and she came really fast. <laughs> <laughs> he so, said that's magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it was nah, I would say. I, nah, yeah, it was the cis girl. And then the trans woman, I would say maybe about two minutes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't I don't think I've um pulled off a minute yet. Um, <laughs> I, I've definitely done under five minutes, um uh, just yeah. from a hand job and like um sucking wise no i don't suck that long i'm sorry <laughs> it's not in the cards for me y'all it's not in the cards but I, I can probably do it uh in terms of like a hand job i just you know i have to practice a little bit more uh, i'm i'm slacking out here i'm slacking you, you never read across a preemie um i have well I, okay, actually, now I think about it, I did uh, <laughs> en encounter that with someone, and I was not pleased because this was somebody who was like, "Oh yeah, let's just meet up," blah 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 blah. And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> you keep asking. I guess I have nothing else to do today." <laughs> so, <laughs> and I was just like, "Okay, we're about to have sex," so, woo, 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 woo. and it was like. <laughs> I drove to pick you up. Oh. Drove back to my place. And this the process was longer than literally the actual sex. The process of taking off clothes was longer than the actual sex. <laughs> I was just like, why? Like you could have warned somebody. It's like not that I'm dissing you for what because look, sometimes I come quick too. It is what it is. Life is great. Life is good. But you can at least just be like, look, this what this happens sometimes, you know. It is what it is. Yeah. I'm an understanding motherfucker. But right. to shock a motherfucker <laughs> like this, after you talking about, oh yeah, you got all this kind of game right. and shit. This is why I don't believe. Right. Don't talk up yourself. Like I have no expectations for sex already. Right. So why? You're talking up yourself for no real reason just to fail. The the phone sex be longer than the actual sex, like the the they they be getting built up, they be getting all the energy built up via text message. Excuse me, <laughs> via text message and fucking whatever, just talking about it. But then when you meet them in person, I already came. Whoa. And then it'd it be the playoff that'd be funny. It'd be the oh yeah, just a little some some you know. Uh, I, I already came, you know. It, it's just weird as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird as hell, but those are definitely disappointing. Like right. my thing is, <laughs> if you if you know you um come quickly, just tell your person that you're engaged in sex that this happens, and get your re recharge game up. Like figure and out some how people you get that. that out. 
And some people are okay with that. They're like, oh, you come fast? Oh, that's nice. I did my job. No. (laughs) If I did not walk away satisfied, I have a problem here. Like, (laughs) are you going to do something else? (laughs) (laughs) Right. You got to at least come with something extra if you know you're going to come, like, fast. Uh, Old old school (laughs) version of myself, the more toxic version. Because I I usually don't like getting my dick sucked. But if the sex is bad, that's what I'm requesting. Because I'm like, uh, I might as well do something here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might as well. <laughs> might as well, because why are we here? <laughs> right. Our, right. We're supposed to get our, both of us are supposed oh, to enjoy it. Exactly. Yes. So the sex question I had for you, um, pre- in post transition, has there been any change in pleasure as uh, as it relates to self pleasure, like masturbation, like in the sensations? Has there been any decrease, increase, any change at all? Oh yes, um, testosterone. You know how testosterone is. That's number one. You know it makes you more sexually active, more libido. Um, that's number one. Number two is my click grew so before pre-transition so it's more of a fun experience as far as before it used to be kind of like a guitar number like it mm. masturbated and then now i can actually jack it so that's that was fun for me that made me feel more masculine made me feel uh, more affirmed and it just feels better because i learned that the clitoris has more nerve endings than a penis Mm-hmm, which is why so, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's been fun. You know, it's I don't know. I could I could just deal with that. Just drag my clit, and that be it, and it just be just as enjoyable as anything else. But as far as um, any other type of sex, I'm very uh, I'm very picky in that regard. So I don't really. Like before, okay, before transition, I didn't have sex like at all. Like I was even a touch me not. I had sex, like I would give girls head, da, da, da. but I was kind of like a touch me not. And then I was still a virgin. So after transition, um, I basically broke my own hymen. You know what hymen mm-hmm. is, right? Mm-hmm. Broke my own hymen with uh, one of my, we call them packers. Um, where you basically use it to pack. And so basically it was fairly small. Like packers, we put them in our boxers, you know, to give that effect to pass more. Like say for instance, I'm wearing sweatpants. I'm not going to not put a packer in there. So mm-hmm. you won't think I have a micro penis Flame. or don't have a penis at all. So Flame that thing. basically, right. So I did it with that and it was different. It was, it was, it was, it was it was a little painful, but I mean, it's something I actually wanted. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, after that, sex has been cool. I mean, when I first started to have sex after that, it was very enjoyable, very exciting. <laughs> it was something new. I was like, oh, wow. OK, you know, it was a whole new world. And then after after a while, you know, getting my taste of fuckery, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I kind of just it kind of got less excited and I kind of just left it where it was at and now I kind of just keep to myself and I mm. only masturbate with a dildo pretty much or have sex with my girlfriend that's yeah <laughs> that's it. you know what I'm saying now you know I don't really I, it's kind of like I've been there done that thing it ain't as exciting I guess that's part of getting older yeah, I don't know. Older and wiser, but more, <laughs> more, more exploration because that's yeah. what, on the flip side of getting older, and you dabble into like kink spaces. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you learn way too much, and you just have to like let me slow shit yeah, down. Yeah, right nah. Like, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be looking at, I'll be trying to find good trans man porn, but it's so hard. But um, for me, I'm sure if you're attracted to trans men. It, you know, a lot, a lot is not hard, but it's hard because I'd be seeing a lot of weird shit like with them boo-booing on the floor and pissing on, pissing and it's too much for me. Mm. 
<laughs> your face. I'm okay with that. I like to I those who are into scat, water sports, and cat, scat play. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all got that. I love it for y'all, I love it for y'all. Granted, I am willing to piss on somebody depending on how we do it. Like, what's going on? Like, I'm here for that. Uh, I, I'm not here for the scat <laughs> stuff, especially watching it. No, not especially watching it. either or. Like, watching it. No, like if I want to see somebody shit. I could just watch myself shit in the mirror in the bathroom. Like, I don't know. I don't get that, but you know, to each his own. Would you, you know. watch yourself shit? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> no, no. But I'm saying, like, ugh. But I guess that's the kink. Like, I've seen it a lot lately, especially the the white trans man. <clears throat> But you know, I'm just keep it at that. <laughs> I guess that's a new fetish. You know, yeah. they always say it's another person's yuck is somebody's yum. So, mm-hmm. that's <laughs> <insane. laughs> yeah. so what what kind of porn do you like though? Like, I mostly like straight porn, like interesting. pussy and dick porn. It could be a trans guy and a cis man, but it's so hard to find something that I like because. Like when I watch porn, I can tell by the the girl's reaction if she like it or not. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I could tell that the strokes are good. You know what I'm saying? Even that's hard to find in straight porn, but like with gay porn, it seemed like it's kind of just like gay porn with trans guys and cis men. It seems like it's kind of just like yeah, I'm fucking a hole, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like I could tell. If there's no experience there, like, I don't know how to explain it. There's no chemistry between the actors. Yeah, like, it's kind of like this where it's at. Now, there's there's some 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 trans guy porn with cis guys that's nice. And I've also liked to see, like, a trans girl and a cis girl. There's this one couple that are really cute, and they have really good chemistry, and they seem like they have a good time. I like theirs. The cis girl is really cute. You know what I'm saying? It's interesting. And then, I don't know. I I mostly watch uh, uh, straight porn. And then I also like to watch gay porn where the guy is giving head to a DL guy or a straight guy or something like that. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just random as hell. But I, I, I guess it's the thought of they probably go in there because they can't get it from the straight girls or the girls they dealing with and i know there's some straight girls that give amazing head but like maybe that's where they going because i can also tell that the guy is really skilled you know what i'm saying and then i mm-hmm. kind of wish i had a dick so i kind of envision you know that's what good head is supposed to be like you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's too it's it's a lot of reasons as to that but i would say mostly straight porn but have yeah. you ever tried a strap on uh, from another person? No, for yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is I it? I topped girls and trans girls, and even a cis guy before. Yeah, fun experience. I mean, it's cool. I I like it. I like it. Of course, I wish I could feel stuff, but mm-hmm. I like it, if, especially if I'm making the person come and they enjoy it and da da da. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, uh, one of my friends, uh, Adrian, we were talking about her and her um, her sexual experiences, and she was like, uh, usually she doesn't even she hates the strap on because of all the like figuring out how to maneuver through that. So she was like, she got to <laughs> a point where she's just like, I just get uh, my dick and some boxers and go to town. I was like, you know what? I fucks with it. I fucks with it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. They can throw off the mood, but like there's been times where there's been like drunk verse sessions. I love those. Um, those are the best <laughs> because it's like I do you first, then you do me. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, I fucks with it. Well, yes. I say that's a good way to close out this damn episode. <laughs> so, Z, is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience before I, um closes out? Yeah, I hope y'all tune in. You know what I'm saying? I plan on having a lot of different people on, you know what I'm saying? Not just in the trans community, um, people under all umbrellas. You know what I'm saying? Stay tuned to everything. 
podcast is now I'm talking about podcast. Um, yeah, I'm on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, uh, fucking Pandora, Amazon, all types of things. So yeah, just check me out. You know what I'm saying I'm growing. Let me know if you want to network. And I thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. And to the listeners out there, thank y'all so much for listening to the Holiloquy podcast where we step out and speak on sexuality. And just in case mm-hmm. no one else told you this today, you are beautiful. You are worthy of happiness and joy. You are enough and then some. You may not live up to the expectations of others, but that is okay. You are only required to walk in your own shoes. May each day you live lead you towards abundance. With that said, love you all and see you next episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Holiloquy Podcast, where we step out and speak on sexuality. You can subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcasting app and find us on the web at www.holiloquy.com. That's www.h-e-a-u-x-l-i-l-o-q-u-y.com. Share the podcast with your friends and join the conversation.